Hello, info person. This is Anton, and it's that time of the year again. The time when we have to discuss the Nobel Prize in Physics, and basically why the scientists won the Nobel Prize, and what exactly their discovery shows us. And well, unlike the 2024's controversial award, which partially went to the researchers behind the artificial intelligence research, specifically based on the statistical physics and the research you can learn about in one of the videos in the description, this year we are diving deep into the foundation of quantum mechanics. But in a way that truly challenges classical reality we take for granted, and the ideas that we usually take for granted, such as objects don't go through walls. And so in 2025, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to John Clark, Michael Deverett, and John Martinez for the achievement that's summarized as the discovery of macroscopic quantum mechanical tunneling and energy quantization in an electric circuit. Or essentially, they demonstrated that famous quantum rules that usually are difficult to understand do not just apply to the tiny world of atoms and electrons, and can actually apply to systems that are much larger, and even systems that you can hold in your hand. They brought the tiny quantum world and the large-scale classical world together. Or, just to rephrase this, they discovered that even larger objects can basically become quantum and go through walls. But before you try this at home, by running into the wall really fast, let's discuss exactly how this works and how it's unlikely to work for us because we're just a little bit too large. But in essence, they demonstrated a famously bizarre rules of quantum world, but mostly using atoms and electrons. But they did so by bringing the quantum reality into the large-scale world around us. And this was a remarkable advance in the world of physics. Mostly because it once again confirmed that we need to understand the main differences between our everyday classical world and the fundamental quantum world that's so much more difficult to understand. But I guess let's maybe start with just some of the more visual explanations in order for all of this to make sense. And so here we're going to use some of the examples from the Nobel Prize website. Imagine throwing a ball against a solid wall. And you can do this many, many times, hundreds, thousands, millions of times. The results are always going to be the same. The ball bounces back. This is our classical everyday world experience, with the wall basically serving as a kind of a impenetrable barrier. But in the quantum world, things are fundamentally different. If you fire a subatomic particle like an electron at a barrier, and even a particle that doesn't really have enough energy to cross the barrier, there's always a very small but positive non-zero chance that the particle is just going to pass directly through the barrier without feeling it. We refer to this as quantum tunneling. And for a very long time, researchers believe that this is inherently a quantum behavior, something that's only microscopic in scale, and something that only applies to maybe single electrons and photons. And that's because once you involve a large number of particles, quantum effects usually become insignificant. And this is where Clark's, Dvorak's, and Martini's work in 1984 and 1985 changed everything. They essentially set out to try to see what happens if you do use larger objects. They wanted to find out if tunneling could happen on macroscopic scales as well, scales involving many particles. And they achieved this using an electronic circuit built out of superconductors. It sort of looked like this, but if we were to try to simplify this, here's basically what it kind of looks like. Now I guess here a quick reminder. Superconductors are materials that conduct electrical current with absolutely zero resistance once they drop below a certain critical temperature. And so for this experiment, the critical component they used was known as the Josephson junction. This is what you're looking at right here. And here is an actual image of the chip developed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. In this case, this is a quantum mechanical device created by using two superconductors that are separated by a relatively thin non-superconducting barrier, which is roughly what you see in this image. So we have a normal conductor on top, and then we have two superconductors in the middle. And so when certain materials become superconductors, the electrons inside of them join in pairs that we usually refer to as Cooper pairs. And these basically always form in superconductors at low temperatures and start to behave as a single quasi-particle and then produce superconductivity properties. And so here one of the first experimental proofs was that a lot of these Cooper pairs flowed through the superconductor and started to behave in unison. They essentially started to act as a single quantum particle. And this is actually kind of similar to the famous Bose-Einstein condensate, where many different particles at certain temperatures and very low pressures will also start acting as a single thing. Single quantum particle. 
and this particle-like macroscopic system found itself trapped in a stable state where current flowed with zero voltage, as if it was behind some kind of a massive classical barrier. And classically, it should have been trapped here forever, but in their experiment the system suddenly showed quantum character. It managed to spontaneously tunnel out of that zero voltage state, causing an electrical voltage to suddenly appear. This is essentially what that third image shows us. So here all of these Cooper pairs start to act as a single particle, but instead of staying in two separate spaces, they actually filled the entire circuit, basically going directly through the wall. And this was the first successful demonstration of macroscopic quantum tunneling. Multiple particles tunneling through the wall. But the work did not stop here. Here they were also able to show that a lot of these macroscopic states, or these macroscopic electrical circuits, also exhibited energy quantization. Now in physics, when we call something quantized, it means that this energy can only exist in very specific and very distinct packets or levels. Basically like steps on a staircase. And so if the system absorbs or emits energy, it can only do so in very precise fixed amounts. This is a typical property for individual atoms. And so here Clark's team confirmed that the large circuit they created also had these quantized energy levels. And this was a very powerful demonstration. Here a massive system containing trillions of electrons could be described by a single wave function that followed quantum rules. And so in many ways the circuit behaved like an engineered artificial atom on a very large scale. And though this may not seem important right now, eventually this laid the groundwork for all of the quantum computing that's done today. And so John Martinez, one of the laureates, went on to pioneer the use of two lowest energy states of these artificial atoms as solid state qubits. Or just qubits as they're usually known. And so the architecture in a typical quantum computer usually relies on superconducting qubits stemming from all of the research I just mentioned that eventually led to the foundation of some of the highest performance quantum computers in existence. And so the initial discovery that Josephson circuits could be quantized basically led to the formation of first quantum computers. But even though quantum computers are still being developed and have not really entered the commercial sector yet, the phenomenon of macroscopic quantum tunneling also powers a lot of specialized devices many of us have already used before. For example, certain types of ultra-low field MRI machines. If you've ever had an MRI taken, there's a very high chance it was actually using very similar principles. Likewise, similar circuits and similar phenomena are usually used in fields like geophysics and even neuroscience in order to collect data. But at the same time, since 2025 was designated as the year of quantum technology and science, this 2025 Nobel Prize is quite timely. This is officially the celebration of 100 years since modern quantum mechanics began, and it's a fitting award that recognizes a breakthrough that confirms persistence of quantum properties even on human scales. And so while there were previous experiments that showed quantum tunneling in a lot of other phenomena, here we had the first types of experiments involving huge numbers of particles that create a single quantum state. And so what does all of this mean? Well, the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics reminds us that the line between different fields of science is very often somewhat blurred. Just as we saw with the 2024 award, where the statistical physics research gave rise to the modern AI applications and computer science, we are now witnessing something somewhat similar. Complex electrical engineering systems showed us some of the deepest secrets of quantum mechanics on a scale we've previously thought impossible. And so Clark, Devore and Martinez gave us all the tools that we need to conduct additional research and to create some of the first qubits which finally bridged the gap between the bizarre subatomic world and macroscopic existence. So this is some of the most fundamental research when it comes to potential future technologies of tomorrow. And though quantum computing is still not there yet, quite a lot of ultra-precise sensors and medical technologies use these phenomena already. And that's of course a perfect example of science at work and the perfect reason to award a Nobel Prize to these three scientists. And so huge congratulations to John Clark, Michel Devore, and John Martinez once again. They definitely deserved it. And so many of these discoveries lay the foundation for advancing quantum technologies we use today. This includes quantum computing, quantum cryptography, various quantum sensors, while at the same time also serving as the foundation for a lot of other technologies we take for granted. And so one of the more important achievements here is the transition from a kind of a theoretical framework to a real-world application and devices based on macroscopic systems 
that we can obviously see and use. But when it comes to future technologies, right now this research has a lot of potential to revolutionize many different fields. For example, fields of secure communication, extremely high performance computations, and super sensitive detection methods. With lots of different prototypes and lots of different research from the last 10 years, harnessing many of these discoveries. And so hopefully this explains what this 2025 Nobel Prize was all about and why it's technically really important for the future of humanity. But until I guess we learn something else about quantum physics, or until the next video about the next Nobel Prize, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support us on Patreon, where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM it directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.